It's a story that Team 10 has been following for more than a year. The issues customers continue to have with online banking financial technology company Chime. As more people come forward with complaints, Team 10 investigator Melissa Masiha shows us what state regulators are doing and what you can do to protect yourself. Chime used to be where Dana Avilar kept her money. It's marketed as an easy online banking experience, but some customers say it's anything but. I got two direct deposits um, before I started having problems. Dana said somehow someone was able to get control of her account and take out some money. She still doesn't know how. Dana disputed it and she got that amount back. I had changed my password. I had um, changed my login information. They sent me a new card. They assured me everything was going to be OK. She said it wasn't. Her phone number was changed on her account. Again, she doesn't know how and again, problems. About two or three days later, same thing happens. They took literally all of the money out of my account, thousands of dollars. After a police report and a lot of back and forth with Chime. They refunded my money but refused to close my account. So I can't verbally talk to anybody on the phone. Since my first stories last year about Chime, these are just some of the emails I received. This email here saying that he can't get a straight answer about what's going on. This email saying that she's received notifications of people accessing her account in Virginia, Wisconsin, West Virginia, and Iowa. This email says that he has been contacting Chime left and right. Many people just looking for the next steps on what to do. The financial technology industry is growing. Well, it's a competitive market. They want a piece of your purse. There's no question about it. University of San Diego finance professor Dan Ricardo said the technology, often known as fintech, has a lot of positives. Consumers access financial services online through the ease and convenience of a smartphone. The negatives are there too. A lot of these platforms really haven't built out their customer support capability to keep up with their clients' needs. Anaya said she's also dealing with a huge loss of money. My money started coming out of my account. Like, it's not just $20, $40 here and there. It's $500, $500 repeatedly. She didn't want to use her last name for privacy concerns. She said the suspicious activity started happening after her tax refund was deposited into her account. They closed my account because I filed a dispute for my money and they denied all of my disputes within the day. With a normal bank, it normally takes a few days. In Anaya's case, a Chime spokesperson said it stands by the original decision and said the member was notified regarding their account status. They wouldn't share additional information. Anaya said she still wanted an explanation. She even tried reaching out to Chime on Twitter. They blocked her. And how do you feel about Chime's procedures when it comes to investigating these claims of fraud? Um, they're horrible. They, they don't take the time. State regulators say Chime is a neobank, non-traditional banking that uses fintech to operate digitally. Last year, the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation wanted to make sure consumers knew that. In this settlement agreement, it prohibited the company from calling itself a bank in any of its marketing material and clarify they instead work with banking partners. Even so, consumer attorney Ben Coughlin said people need to be cautious. What are they marketing? It's all the same things that banks are marketing. Uh, checking and savings accounts with uh, that, that don't have fees, no minimum balance. So while they are not a bank, they are competing with banks. And that is, um, in a sense, very difficult for most consumers to understand. If you're in a situation like Dana and Anaya, Ben said take good notes. Try to document everything you're doing. And while legal action is always an option, Ben knows it isn't always possible for some. Finding other avenues, one, writing reviews online, finding journalists who are covering these things and holding these companies responsible is incredibly important. Also, report to agencies like the DFPI and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. From October last year to early November this year, the state financial regulator received 342 complaints about Chime. A DFPI spokesperson confirmed they are currently investigating Chime's dispute resolution practices. For both Anaya and Dana, there is no resolution. A Chime spokesperson told me in Dana's case, the member services team was in touch with her on August 19th and communicated Chime's requirements to initiate the account closure. Dana can't give them the required information, like the phone number connected to the account, because she said it's been changed without her permission. Be careful. Definitely be careful of putting your money in there. Melissa Masiha, Team 10.
Team 10 also reached out to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to find out if they were investigating complaints about Chime. A spokesperson said they could not confirm or deny if they were.